Okay, so this is the question. It says, consider the interference maxima and minima that may be produced by Young's double slit experiment. Let me just draw a picture of the setup just so that I have a place to label things as the need may arise. So double slit, screen, um, some separation D, and um, this the light that's uh, shining from here is uh, producing some kind of double solid interference pattern. And we'll be describing little theta here. Um, okay, so the part A asks, if the first order maximum for monochromatic light falling on a double solid is at an angle of 9.5 degree. Okay, let me start labeling these things. So first order, that's referring to where, so um, whenever you're dealing with a Young's double solid experiment, then you are limiting to just describing constructive and uh, destructive interference, meaning the maximum and in fact, uh, and minimum, then these are the two conditions that you want to have in mind for maximum d times the sine of theta, the position of the maximum is equal to the order of interference times lambda. And for minimum, d times sine theta. And this m now should be a half integer and I want to write it this way, m plus one half lambda. This way, um, m will, wait, actually, sorry, m minus one half. This will, way m will go from, um, so m equals zero will refer to the, the central maximum and and there's no such thing as central minimum. <laughs> and um, the the first order, second order, they will be meaningful starting with m equals one, m equals two and so on. So the first order refers to when you have m equals one. Um, so let me just label this angle as a theta one. Uh, at what angle is the second order maximum in the same setup? Okay, so it's gonna be asking for what is uh, theta two. Um, let me just write down a few expressions. So it looks like the question hasn't given me any value of D um, or lambda, but I'm hoping that I don't actually need those values. So uh, in part A, the information that I've been given amounts to um, D, some unknown value times sine of theta one, um, and they gave me the order, m equals one, so that's equal to one times the wavelength lambda. And what we are being asked is um, d times sine theta two. So this is the second equation that involves the quantity that's being asked for. And this is the maximum, so that should be, um, so second, or, so I should still be using the first equation here. Um, but this time with the m equals two times lambda. So when you are looking at this superficially, um, it's easy to think that it's not solvable because you have one, two, three unknowns. Now we have one happy accident here, which is that two of the unknowns in both of the equations, they can be combined into a combination that lets me get rid of both of them. So let me just, uh, let me put D uh, on the right-hand side for both of them. Doing that gets you sine of theta one is equal to lambda over D. In the second equation, I get sine of theta two is equal to two lambda over D. So EP, um, I can treat this as just one unknown. Uh, so I have a one, two unknowns in two equation, I can just solve for it. So I guess I'm uh, solving for, I have solved for lambda over the here, plug it in here, you get uh, sine of theta two is equal to two times the sine of theta one. And the rest of the work here is just uh, solving for theta two here, kind of numerically. When you are done doing that, you should get the answer. Um, it's, I'm just gonna do this. Well, I'm not even really doing it. I'm just doing arc sine to this. And these angles are small enough that you don't have to worry about the domain of uh, arc sine. So this is just gonna be arc sine of two times the sine of theta one. Uh, 
And it should be remarkably close to uh, double this or 19 degrees. In fact, 19 degrees might be accepted as correct answer within the tolerance. Um, so yeah, that, that wasn't all that hard. Um, let me see if uh, parts B and C are harder. In part B, it's, uh, so you know, in solving this question, we never really needed to solve for lambda, we need, didn't need to solve for D, and I hope that continues. Um, in the same setup, um, what is the angle of the first minimum? Okay, so so far I've written down um, one, two, equations based on this equation. Oh, sorry, I'm, <laughs> let me change some of these labels. <laughs> based on this equation, A. So now the third equation that I'll need to write down is gonna be based on this equation B because we are dealing with uh, minimum. So we are looking for destructive interference. And I'm looking for the first minimum so especially in the way I've written the equation there, this should mean that m is equal to one. So let me write that down. Um, so just copying that equation over d times the sine. Um, so let me just call this a theta mean. Theta mean is equal to, plugging in m equals one actually gets me one half for the coefficient. So one half times, uh, lambda, it's the same lambda we've been using. So, oh, so I, I think I'm just gonna do the same thing. And so, you know, I'm just gonna put D and lambda together so that instead of those being two separate unknowns, I can treat it like one unknown. So I have sine of theta min is equal to one half times lambda over D. And I think I'm just gonna use this the same equation that I've used before because this is the nice one where left-hand side is all known, right-hand side it can be used to just plug it in here and get rid of that unknown, one half sine of theta one. So just take the arc sine, that'll give me the angle here. So theta means should be arc sine of uh, one half uh, sine of theta one. And I think when you plug in the number, you will get something that's remarkably close to half of this. Um, so like something close to 4.25 degrees with a, you know, that's the small angle approximation. And I think we are still in the range where that's pretty accurate. Um, what is the highest order maximum possible here? Okay, highest order maximum that may be visible is given by all right, um, let me just uh, just to write things out. So I'm dealing with the maximum, so I'm dealing with the D sine theta. Um, and the unknown that I'm being asked for is not the angle. Unknown that I'm being asked for is M, the order, M max uh, times lambda. Okay, um, I can solve for M max. And when I do, I get um, D over lambda times the sine theta, okay. Oh, and I think, uh, let me just uh, substitute in this quantity with something that I already know using this. Um, so it's a reciprocal of that. So I can just replace that with a one over sine theta to get me sine theta over sine of theta one. Okay. Oh, and I think this is where I'm supposed to remember that this quantity here, it's limited to the largest it can be is one. So, so from this uh, equation here, what I can say is this, that m max, whatever it may be, is gonna be less than one divided by sine of theta one. And yeah, yeah. And, and um, so the rest of this should be done numerically as in you should plug in the numbers for sine of theta one and figure out what one over the number is. It should be some largest uh, real number. And what you need to for this uh, uh, maximum is you have to find the largest integer. That's less than that. 
so what the one thing that you have to be careful and the reason I'm stating it this way, instead of saying equals or saying approximately equals is that it, it should be, so, you know, if this number happens to have a 10th digit that's a, like a 0 0.6, 0 0.7, then you shouldn't round it up. It should always be rounded down because this is the upper limit. So, um, so M is, I guess in the programming terms that this should be ceiling um, deter of, um, or the integer that is uh, uh, kept by one over sine theta one. So actually find the number and put that integer value in. So yeah, it should be. I actually want to try that out. Um, I, I'm curious on how the uh, system will handle uh, answers that are slightly off. So one divided by uh, 9.5 trigonometry sine. So that's six point. Okay, uh, all right. I, I think that's uh, at such a number that it should just uh, not. Well, you, let me give it a try. So let me see what it'll say if I um, if I try um, six point oh six. I hope it'll reject it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that this is not an integer. So there should be some. Uh, yeah, I think there's something in the code that enforces that this is an integer. And at least for this particular number that it was not a possibility that I would round this up to seven. But even if it were, um, let me see if I can get a question where, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm wasting time here, but let me just to see if, uh, yeah, that was never gonna round up to seven. <laughs> 4.5. Um, I'll just do it one more time. And then if I don't get a number I like, I just won't bother anymore. Oh, sign. Okay. Uh, it's still not supposed to round up. So, all right, I'm done. Uh, but, you know, even if this were like, uh, so, you know, even if your angle was uh, 10 degrees and this was 5.6 or something, you shouldn't round up, you should always round up. So, 